All right, guys, congratulations. You've now made it all the way to the test yourself section. Let's go ahead and get started. So in this vignette, we have a nine-year-old girl who recently came to the United States from Laos. She's complaining of persistent fatigue and joint pain after the resolution of what her mother described as a routine childhood cold. She has abnormal heart murmurs, although the pediatrician could not place a particular pathology to them. The image is a histologic section of the myocardium from an individual who suffered the same condition. Now, which finding in the image is pathognomonic of this individual's disease process? So, nothing against immigrants here. My father's one, actually. But you need to be very careful when you have a vignette that includes emigration from another country that may not have the same routine vaccination with healthcare screening processes, such as the United States. You automatically want to think about one of the viral exanthems due to lack of immunization therapy, or TB. But this question is trying to mislead you with that immigrant element. What is happening in this young Laotian girl is something that could happen in anyone in the United States that isn't properly treated with antibiotics following a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal pharyngitis. Now, if you know that she has acute rheumatic fever secondary to previous streptococcal infection, you aren't off the hook yet. We still need to be able to take the next step and remember the histology associated with the disease. So the image here shows us an ash off body, which is an area of interstitial inflammation characterized by fragmented collagen containing NHCAL cells, and also the multi nucleated Ashoff cells. Remember, Panichkow cells and Ashoff cells compose an Ashoff body. With all of this in our mind, we know that the answer is going to be E, perivascular foci of fragmented collagen and giant cells. Now, you have to remember to diagnose rheumatic fever with the Jones criteria. Remember, the Jones criteria includes J for joints, the O in the shape of a heart for carditis, the N for the subcutaneous nodules, E for erythema marginatum, and S for the sydenham chorea. What about these other answers? Well, we know that answer A is not correct because granulomas are central areas of necrosis surrounded by macrophages, lymphocytes, and plasma cells. You see these bad boys in tuberculosis and sarcoid. Remember, sarcoid is characterized by non-caseating granulomas. We know it's not answer B because large lymphoid B cells with abundant pale cytoplasm and two lobulated nuclei with large nucleoli is describing the reed sternberg cells Remember, the owl eye-looking cells that are CD15 positive and 30 positive, these are classic for Hodgkin's lymphoma. This patient doesn't have any signs or symptoms of lymphoma. Now, foam cells are part of the atheromatous process, which are lipid-laden macrophages. That's definitely not the answer here. A starry sky pattern is a buzzword for Burkitt's lymphoma. So we obviously know that D is not the correct answer because macrophages scattered within a sheet of monotonous lymphoid cells is classically describing the starry sky pattern due to the lymphocytes surrounding an area of macrophages that have consumed tumor cells and tumor debris. Okay, here goes another test yourself question. So we have a four-year-old boy with a history of intellectual disability and seizures brought to the physician with a three-month history of worsening shortness of breath. So during physical examination, the patient notices numerous acne-like papules on the patient's face. Echocardiogram shows significant left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis for this patient's heart condition? Okay, this vignette is giving you some key descriptors, including the mental retardation, aka intellectual disability, the seizures, the shortness of breath, acne papules on the face, and the decrease in left ventricular output due to obstruction. This is a classic presentation of someone with tuberous sclerosis. Tubers in the brain cause seizures and mental retardation. The acne on the face is actually what we call angiofibromas. We can see that here in this image. This has previously been called buzzwords that students look for called adenoma sebacea. Do not expect to see anything like this on the exam. You have to be able to describe this as angiofibromas on the face. The key to the question is remembering the cardiac manifestations of tuberous sclerosis. Now we'll switch back, and the answer is obviously rhabdomyoma. Patients with tuberous sclerosis develop rhabdomyomas in their myocardium. Here we go. We can see the massive rhabdomyoma that we saw previously in the lecture. Remember, the protein tuberin is responsible for telling cardiomyocytes to stop growing. With a dysfunctioning tuberin protein, we get huge rhabdomyomas that can compete with left ventricular diastolic filling, and therefore there's decrease in left ventricular output. This causes the shortness of breath that this patient was talking about. Okay, guys, great job. Keep it up. Hope you do well on your step one exam.